Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have my top 14 Dollar Tree Coastal Farmhouse DIYs for you all in one video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And as always, the timestamps for these DIYs are down below in the description box if you'd like to skip around. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications so you never miss out on a new video. All right, let's get into it. This DIY, I just went to Dollar Tree and picked up four of these eight by 10 white frames. And then and I went onto my computer and I printed off four pictures of these sea life creatures and I got these off of canva.com they have a lot of free artwork this video isn't sponsored by them I just use them for a lot of free stuff to print things off so I wanted to quickly show you how easy it was to get on and print it off yourself you just go to canva.com and then you select whatever type of Thing you are working on I picked a flyer and then I just went to elements and typed in the search bar ocean and it pulled up a ton of different ocean um, pictures that I could use and most of them were free so I picked one that I liked I resized it you can even change the color so that way it matches your decor and then when you are ready to print it off you just go up to the little print flyer and click the drop down and change it to a JPEG and then click download. Once it's downloaded to your computer, all you have to do is open it up and click print. And that's what I did with all four of these pictures. Once I got all of those printed out, I just took the backings off of the frames and I used a little insert in each one of the frames to just trace over the picture that I printed out. So that way it would be the same size and I wouldn't have a bunch of excess paper sticking out of the back of the frame um, so I just traced it with a pencil and then cut it out with some scissors and then I just placed the picture back in the frame with the backing and that was all there was to it it's super easy and affordable DIY, I'm going to be using one of these wooden arrow signs from Dollar Tree and I was going to use it in a previous project so that's why it's already painted um, so I just left it this color it is uh, spray painted with this rust-oleum chalked spray paint in the color serenity blue and I think it looks pretty coastal with that color and then I just took some of these white rocks from Dollar Tree and I spelled out the word beach onto the arrow I just laid everything out the way I liked it and to make sure that it all fit first before I glued everything down. Once I got it all laid out, I just went back with some hot glue to secure the rocks down. And that was it. This one was super simple. It took about five minutes to make, but it makes for some really cute beach decor. The next super simple DIY is going to be a candle tray using one of these little wooden trays from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to paint it with some white chalk paint. I did one coat and it dried really quick with just one coat and chalk paint dries really quick anyways. So that was easy and then I just took two equal pieces of nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I hot glued the ends of those pieces through the handle holes. Um, to the inside of the tray just to make this look a little more coastal by adding the nautical rope. Then I used these little aqua pebbles from Dollar Tree and spread those on the bottom of the tray and then I placed my candles inside the tray. I would definitely advise using LED candles and not real candles because it's a little dangerous to use real candles around all of this and it's really open. Um, but that was it. I love how it turned out. For this next easy DIY, I took two of these round wooden tags from Dollar Tree and I just spray painted the tops of them with the Serenity Blue chalked paint, the same paint I used on the wooden arrow. 
um, and it dried really quickly especially since it was hot outside and it was only the top I just did a light coat and that was enough to cover the design that was already on there then I took one of these crafters square stencil wheels this one had some seashells and a starfish and a sand dollar on it so I thought that was perfect for some coastal decor and I just chose these uh, little starfish for this one and I took my stencil brush that came from Dollar Tree with just a little bit of paint on it just just enough to stencil the uh, starfish in the seashell on to that little wooden tag and then it dried really quickly that way um, and then once it was dry I just took my piece of sandpaper and just went around the edges of each uh, tag so that way I could expose a little bit of the white and make it look a little more weathered just the way I like it then I came back with some twine and strung that through each one of the tags and tied that at the top and cut the excess twine off. And then with the um, twine, I just strung that with some of these wooden beads. These came from Amazon. I like these wooden beads because you get like a large quantity for a really good price and they are just plain wooden beads so they're easier to paint you don't have to paint over all of the different crazy colors like dollar tree um ones are so i'll leave a link to those down below in the description box um i think they are just a good deal if you are using wooden beads so the first thing i did was i strung them with 20 beads on the twine and i was just going to leave it that way and i thought about adding a tassel but then I decided to make more of a hanger out of them so I took six of the beads off and ended up just stringing them with 14 beads and then pushing the end of the twine through that hole and tying it off to make a little hanger out of it so that way you could just hang it on a um, vase or a bottle whatever you would like and that was it to this I think they turned out so pretty Last but not least, I made a cute coastal wreath with one of these light colored willow wreaths from Dollar Tree. I did go ahead and take some white matte spray paint and just lightly spray paint over the top of the wreath just to give it like a white wash look. Um, so that way it would just look more coastal and then I took some nautical rope and I hot glued the end of the nautical rope to the back of the wreath and then I wrapped some of the nautical rope just around the wreath kind of just sporadically I didn't have like a pattern and then I hot glued that uh, end to the back of the wreath and I wanted this wreath to kind of look like it fell to the bottom of the ocean and got caught up with just some seashells and some nautical rope I wish I had some fishing net to use on this because I think that would have made it really cute too sometimes Dollar Tree has that but I haven't seen it this year but if you have it I think that would be really cute to add to this wreath I just added some seashells that actually I had from my husband's saltwater fish tank um, but Dollar Tree sells seashells as well or if you live near the ocean maybe you can use some that you have collected um, in the past to glue to your wreath. Uh, I just glued the seashells randomly around the wreath so that way it didn't look perfect. It just kind of like I said looked like it fell to the bottom of the ocean and got caught up in all of the ocean things that are there. The last thing I did to this wreath is take another piece of nautical rope and I just put it around the top of the wreath to use as a hanger and then I tie the two pieces together in a knot and cut the excess rope and that was it for this cute coastal wreath For this DIY, I'm going to use seven of these cute little frames from Dollar Tree. Um, I think they already look 
kind of nautical and coastal with the color and the driftwood look that they have. Um, I just began by removing um, the backing and the paper um, and the glass and pulling out those little tabs and then hot gluing the glass back into each one of these frames. Next, I'm going to take the frames with the glass glued back into them and I am going to hot glue them together. Um, I hot glued them together long ways. I did three and then I did two on the side and then three on the back to make a box. Now I would recommend using E6000 to glue the glass and to glue these frames down so that that way it has more of a permanent hold because hot glue will not last that long. Um, but it was easy to glue these together and make a box out of them and like I said I did it long ways so um, they're not standing up they're the long way um, and then to reinforce them I took um, some popsicle sticks and I hot glued those down to the back of each one of those creases on each side of the frames now to make a bottom, I used some more popsicle sticks and I just cut them down to size and then I just began hot gluing them to the bottom of the box. Again, I would definitely recommend using E6000 and applying some pressure onto those sides where um, you're gluing them down to make it last longer. Also, this is not something that's going to hold a like anything really heavy um, it's more of a lightweight material that you need to put inside of here because it will break I'm sure um, I did reinforce the inside of the bottom with some more popsicle sticks and then I added that pool noodle at the bottom to place my floral into you could use any type of floral you would like. Um, I just had some of the grass from Dollar Tree and I just think that this always looks like the seagrass that you see in like the planters and stuff that they sell at the stores. So I put five of these into um, a row uh, into the pool noodle. I did use some hot glue to hot glue them down into the pool noodle and I cut them down a little bit. Um, now to fill in the top, I just placed a couple bags of seashells that I got from Dollar Tree um, and I just placed them around. You could hot glue them down so that they um, stay and don't slip around so you can see that blue. Um, but I was fine with them just laying in there. And then I had these uh, little gems from Dollar Tree that I've never seen this color before and I placed that on top and that was it for this. For this DIY, I used two styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree. These are the larger balls that you can get there. And then I also used some of this cotton rope from Dollar Tree. Um, I just cut two small pieces and then I looped them together so that both ends met at the bottom. Um, and then I poked holes with my scissors into the styrofoam ball uh, and then I pushed the um, rope down into those holes and hot glued them into those holes to make loops for my balls. Now I just took one of the bigger bags of seashells from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to start hot gluing the seashells around the styrofoam ball starting at the top where I hot glued the um, nautical cotton rope into the styrofoam. And I'm just overlapping um, the seashells as I work my way around the styrofoam ball. Um, I found that it was more circular shaped at the end when I use the same size seashells all the way around the styrofoam ball. The other one I made that you can see in the bottom corner of the video, um, that was the first one I made and I started using the smaller seashells first and then working my way up to the bigger ones. And it still looks cute, but it's not as circular as the second one I made, but I still think they make a cute pair. I used one of the big bags of seashells for both of these balls and depending on how you cover them up that will work just fine um, to give you good coverage and I think this turned out super cute and perfect for some beachy decor.
for the next DIY, I'm gonna use one of these white trays um, from Dollar Tree. And I think the edges, the scalloped look, uh, kind of reminds me of seashells or fish scales or mermaid scales. So I think it's perfect to make some coastal decor out of. I'm also gonna use some of these gems from Dollar Tree. I have a ton left over from other previous projects. So I'm gonna start off with the blue here. And what I did was I just laid out and made the shape of what I think looks like a uh, starfish. And I didn't like follow any pattern or anything. I just kind of did what I thought looked cute and looked like a starfish. And then I used some hot glue to hot glue the gems down. I would definitely use super glue or E6000. Again, that will last longer and they won't pop up because um, hot glue, they will eventually pop up. Um, so like I said, I just uh, laid everything down and then I hot glued the blue gems down. And then to fill the outer edges of the starfish, I used the clear gems and hot glued those all around the tray. I ended up using two bags of the clear gems to fill in around the starfish and then for the starfish I used about half a bag of the blue gems. Um, and you could do whatever design you would like, it doesn't have to be a starfish. To fill in the gaps around the gems, I used some of the Alex Fast Dry Caulking um, because I have a ton left over from all the house projects I've been doing. Um, and you could actually use caulking from Dollar Tree, you could use resin, you could use brown out, or you could just leave it plain. It's up to you. Uh, once all of the gaps were filled, I just wiped away the excess caulking with a damp paper towel and used a dry paper towel to clean everything off. There's still a little residue, but I love how this turned out. It's such a cute piece of coastal beachy decor. For this DIY, I picked up a pair of beachy flip-flops from Dollar Tree. Um, I went with ones that were beachy themed because I had all intentions of leaving the color. I wasn't going to paint these flip-flops or anything, but you'll see later on I decided to do that. Um, so I started off by removing the straps to the sandals and I used some of the cotton nautical rope as replacement straps. So I just cut two pieces to size and I just pushed the end of the cotton rope through the holes that were already there in the flip-flops. Um, this was pretty easy except for the top hole was a little bit more difficult um, to pull both pieces of rope through that one hole. I did have to make the hole just a tad bit bigger, um, but it actually, in the end, you'll see it made it easier to pull the rope through if both pieces of rope were laying on top of each other and you did it at the same time and not one each, like you tried to feed one through and then the other through. Anyways, it worked out. Um, I put the rope through and then I cut the backs of the rope to make it look a little bit nicer on the back. And then I decided, no, I'm going to go ahead and paint these. And I didn't want to remove the rope that I already put in there. So I left the rope on and I started painting these white. Um, and then I decided that was pretty boring. Um, so I went in and mixed some blue coastal looking um, color and I decided to take some painter's tape and try to, I was going to paint stripes with the blue again without removing the um, straps that I had put on there. Well, that didn't work out. It doesn't look horrible on camera, but it doesn't, it didn't look good. Um, so I ended up removing the straps and I went ahead and painted each flip flop with the blue. And I decided I was going to give this more of a weathered look like they were um, kind of wooden sandals. So I, after the blue paint was dry, I took a piece of sandpaper and I went around the edges of each flip flop and sanded it down so that you could just see the white poking through. And then I took some stain to make it a little bit more weathered and old looking. Um, and I just painted that over each flip flop and wiped it with a paper towel. 
still wasn't satisfied with that, decided to come back with some white paint, I don't know why, and I um, wasn't satisfied with that either, so I came back with some more stain, and still wasn't satisfied with that look, so I put some more blue on top of that, and then just wiped it all with a paper towel. And it did eventually end up giving me a, um, more weathered look that I was kind of going for, but I don't think I needed to go through all of this process. I probably should have stopped at the first coat of stain and paint, but that's okay. I still like how they turned out. Um, and then I went ahead, like you see here, I am putting the uh, straps back on. And um, as you can see, I am um, doubling up there at the top hole um, for the rope and it went in a lot smoother than the first time I tried to do it. Um, so I went ahead and put those back and then trend the backs off like I did before Then I put a couple seashells that I had left over um, On the top there and hot glued those down. I took a piece of twine and hot glued those to the back of each flip-flop So that that way I could hang these up then I decided I needed a little bow at the top of the twine because it looked a little plain like this. So I took some hula skirt from Dollar Tree, the raffia, and I tied um, a bunch of that around the top of the twine and cut it down. Um, and then I used some more and made a bow and just hot glued that down to the top of the twine I wrapped around there, or the raffia I wrapped around there before. And then just cut the pieces. And I think this turned out super cute. For the last DIY, I'm using these mirrors from Dollar Tree. I got these a while back, but I know they still sell these types of mirrors at Dollar Tree. I've seen them recently. Um, and I'm gonna use some of that nautical cotton rope. I just began with the end of the, the nautical rope there. Um, it does come with a piece of tape wrapped around the end, so I cut that off. And then I just started hot gluing um, the nautical rope around the mirror around the frame of the mirror. I just started in the center where that frame started and then I just kept hot gluing it down. I used two um, bunches of the rope for each mirror and once I got to um, the end of the frame of the mirror, um, which actually wasn't until like the last time I went around with the rope, um, I just hot glued the rope to itself all the way around. Um, and it held up really well. And then these already have hangers on the back of them. So it works out perfectly when you are ready to hang them or you could use some command strips because these are super lightweight. I just did this to all three of the mirrors and it definitely gives you that coastal beachy nautical look that I love so much. DIY was inspired by something I saw on Kirkland's website. It's a little beach house hook decor and I had these four arrows from Dollar Tree. So I just went ahead and cut the twine off and I'm going to fill in the holes with just some hot glue. You could use um, wood filler or wood glue if you have that on hand. I just tend to use hot glue since I'm always working with hot glue. The next thing I'm going to do is line these houses up side by side and I'm going to to hot glue them together. So you can see here that I'm just hot gluing them together right there at the little um, roof line that sticks out. So I'm gonna have one on top of two houses and then another one at the end that's on top. Now what I'm gonna do is use these three spray paints to create a ombre effect on these houses, which is kind of what I saw on the Kirkland's ones. So I took the darker color first and sprayed 
that on the bottom and then took the lighter blue and sprayed that in the middle and then ended it all with the white at the very top and around the top of the sides and I think it turned out really pretty and the ombre effect really worked with just the spray paint the next thing I decided to do um, was add some nautical rope to the roof lines um, that way so it just stood out a little bit more um, the ones on the Kirkland website had some extra wood pieces on it and I just thought it needed something extra so I thought the nautical rope would look good on them so I just used some hot glue and just lined those roof edges with the nautical rope and cut the excess off at the ends where the roof stopped at the next thing I decided to do was add a window to each one of these houses because I thought they looked a little plain. So I had these wooden chest pieces that come from a wooden chest set from Dollar Tree. They are just flimsy little pieces of wood, but I painted them white and they were perfect to stick on my house for little windows. So I just placed one on each of the houses in the middle and hot glued it down. And I don't know, I just think it gives it more of a beachy effect for some reason. The next thing that I did was add the hooks. I got these hooks at Dollar Tree. They are in the auto parts hardware section of Dollar Tree. And I just flipped over my sign and hot glued the hooks onto the back of the houses in between the houses. So I just placed some hot glue on each side of the bottom of the houses and then placed my hook on there. And of course, this is not something that is going to hang anything heavy duty. Um, it's just for decorative purposes. Um, and then the last thing that I did was add a piece of nautical rope to the back with some hot glue to make a hanger. And I think these turned out to be cute, perfect beach houses. For this next DIY, I'm going to be making some fishing orb decor with two of these round glass vases from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to give them a sea glass effect with some regular old white school glue and I just poured that onto a plate and then I'm going to add a couple drops of some blue and green food coloring or more if I needed it just to give me the color that I want it to be. Once you get the color that you like, all you need to do is take a foam brush and paint the inside of your glasses. Not the outside, but the inside. And it will be streaky in some parts, but don't worry, it will dry pretty clear. Once it's all painted, you wanna make sure that you dry the glasses upside down so that way if the glue drips, it drips outward and not all inside the glass and you don't see the drips. Um, once it was all dry, now I'm going to add the uh, twine effect or I don't know what you would call it. I guess it's kind of like a macrame effect. So what I did here was I just took a piece of twine and doubled it over and then I tied it into a circle um, that fit the bottom of my glass vase like you can see here. Then I am going to take some hot glue and just hot glue that knot onto the top and then hot glue the other side so that way it won't move around on me when I'm tying the other other pieces of twine to it. Now I'm going to take some more twine and I'm just going to double that piece over again and then I'm going to take the loop and pull that through the circle that I placed on top of my glass uh, candle holder or vase whatever you want to call it and then I'm just going to loop those bottom pieces through that loop to make a loop so that way it stays on my um, circle twine thing that I made and I'm sorry I'm not explaining this very well it's kind of hard to explain but I hope you guys can see what I am doing I did this all the way around the vase about I think it was like eight times is what I did you can do it more or less how many ever um, you want it's up to you and then once you get those pieces on you want to take these strands at the bottom one from each knot that you made at the top and then you want to take those two and you want to knot those two together and then you're gonna do that all the way around the candle holder um, and you want to make sure when you're doing it that you're lining them up so that way they are even 
As I was doing the second set of knots, I did go back around and put some hot glue around that first top loop up there just to hold everything down as I was going and to make sure that it was all staying in place. Um, and then once I got that second set of knots done, I came back and did a third set of knots. And I did it the same way. I just took one strand of twine from each knot and then I put that together and tied it into a knot and then I just measured to make sure that my knot was going to sit on my uh, candle holder or vase um, the way I wanted it to and then I did that all the way around the uh, glass as well so I ended up having three sets of knots or three rows of knots on the vase, which I think um, worked out perfectly for this size. Once I had all the knots done, I just flipped over the vase and I pulled up the excess pieces of twine and hot glued those down to the rim or the inside of the vase just a little bit. Um, and you wanna make sure that you pull tightly when you are hot gluing, so that way um, it doesn't fall apart on you and it looks neat and nice. Um, and then once I got all of the pieces of twine glued down, I just cut the excess twine and that was it. They were really pretty and perfect for some coastal decor. next DIY is super easy. I have a ton of these glass gems from Dollar Tree left over from previous projects. They are never ending. So I just picked out the color that I liked. This is a blue green sea glass looking gem and I have 22 of them to work with. So what I'm going to do is take some fishing line. This is my husband's. I just found it out in the garage but I just wanted it to be clear so that's why I'm using the fishing line. And I am going to place a gem upside down, place a little dab of hot glue, and then place the fishing line on top of it. And then add just a little bit more hot glue and then place another gem on top of that gem and sandwich the fishing line in between the two gems. And then I'm going to do this for all 22 beads until I, or not beads, glass gems, until I run out. And this is gonna give me that kind of coastal farmhouse bead decor um, that I'm looking for and once I run out of beads I'm just going to go ahead and cut the excess uh, fishing line at the bottom there so um, one side will just be the gem and it holds really well and then the other side I'm going to make a little tassel with some twine so I just wrapped it around my four fingers a bunch of times and then took another piece of twine and just tied it at the top and wrapped a little bit of twine around that and hot glued it and then just cut the bottom apart that loop apart and then I'm gonna feed the fishing line in between the loop at the top there and tie it and that's it it's super simple and really pretty for some farmhouse coastal decor DIY is just as easy as the previous DIY that I just did. I am just going to use this mason jar from Dollar Tree that I lost part of the lid to and I'm just going to take the rest of the lid off and I'm going to use some nautical rope and I'm just going to start off at the um, bottom rim there and hot glue some nautical rope all the way to the top of the rim. And then once that's finished, I'm gonna take this little metal house that came from Dollar Tree a few years ago, and I'm going to cut the little roof line off on both sides. You just This is one side right here. And I'm gonna take that roof line and I'm going to wrap the end of a piece of nautical rope um, with that 
piece of metal so that that way the not the painted piece of metal shows but the actual piece of metal shows and I don't know this reminds me I guess of like a little nautical lantern that you would see and they always have the little um, metal pieces wrapped around the nautical rope uh, for the hanger so that's kind of what I was trying to replicate so I did that on both sides of the nautical rope. Be careful because the metal is just a little bit sharp. I used some um, pliers to help me bend the metal, but it was pretty easy. It's pretty flexible metal. Once I got those pieces on, I just hot glued those sides to the sides of the nautical rope on the jar. And I have myself a little hanger. And then lastly, I'm just gonna take a candle Typically, I would use an LED battery operated candle, but I didn't have one. So I just placed a regular one in there and added some of those gems inside. And you have a pretty coastal lantern. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed these coastal DIYs. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.